Consistency. Great, we are back. We are on, man? back, man. What up? I am Baron J six seven. I'm T Jones, and this is the Adventures of the Black Nerd. Shout out to Tone Deaf Radio Network. Nerd Network. War. Network. Yeah, it's Network Tone. You know, and it's funny. I keep saying that, but then I always have to like, oh no, 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 not the. Uh, not radio network right uh sh- yeah shout out tone and tone deaf network what else we got shout out oh nerd get it done ner- ner- nerds noir nerds noir i was getting to that yeah shout out to our personal challenge uh channels and all of our uh, yeah. social everything is in the description below yes now on to yeah, the... that, was, that was like an epic, and then we just had like yeah. I was like, phone. oh man, what are we talking about now? Something supposed to, something yeah, supposed to insert something. Yeah, like right? uh, humming, humming, humming. Yeah. No, so, uh, go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. Let's start us off. Okay, so we got to keep talking about the great and powerful Apex Legends. Yeah, with... yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Um, now for me, I've probably ran maybe like ten or fifteen more matches since we last talked about it. Um, which isn't that many because it doesn't take long, especially for me, and I'm trash. Uh, I get a kill, and I think I won the whole match. Um, oh. Yeah. Oh, don't let me get a kill, bro. Because I just run. You are you one of them solo players that just run away? From no, the I'm actually so up the other player's ass that that's probably why we all die together all the time. <laughs> it's like Band of Brothers every every match. It's like if you got one of us. You got me too. You get all of us, yeah, like, oh, he dropped a nade. Move where? I'm right here. <laughs> it's over. It's like, over. Right. Like, like, I why is my shotgun shells getting friendly fire? Like, no, bro. It's I'm terrible at the game. But you know, yeah. you know why I'm terrible. Same thing with PUBG, same thing with Fortnite. When I first start a new battle royale, I um instead of just playing I, I try to follow the and and work my way with my teammates so I fall short skill wise. But so, you gotta also you gotta also think about that. When you're playing solo and I mean you're playing not with friends, with the with the actual squad, uh huh. Mike chatter and then how people play is how you play those stuff. Oh yeah. You may see something on the direction, but somebody may not say it. Yeah. Or somebody may not have a mic. You're playing, you know, you're you're playing squad, but you're playing by yourself in a sense. And when I do when I play like that, what I like to do is follow other people's lead. Yeah. So if I see you running north, okay, cool. I'm gonna We're running there, north, yeah. You know, and I'm just gonna be prepared. And I'm like that in, in most games. So But let me tell you this though, and this is where and this is kind of piggybacking into uh esports, but this is where um uh, Apex Legends takes takes the lead for me. It makes it completely uh, mic list friendly. I don't need a yeah. mic to completely play a whole match. I've played with randoms and went further than if we had mics. All mm-hmm. simply because you can mark. It's easy to mark. It's easy to set like, oh, here's a level two shield. Oh, here's a whatever. It's real quick, real easy. And I know we talked about that before, so I don't want to beat, you know, beat a tree to death dead tree but um but rolling over to esports so we came across an article where from uh the verge where a lot of esports teams are starting to flock towards apex legends yeah. um go ahead so i can tell you a couple hold on let me <laughs> my phone going crazy uh so one of the teams is, is a brand new team to be honest and uh they uh they're probably about a few years old they're not more than uh they're probably not more than yeah like two three years and that's 100 thieves and they decided to jump in into the battle royale scene by picking up players professional players um in and okay so i'm gonna just tell you first they're picking up players they're yeah some really good players at the game Nothing wrong with that. I think it's 100% fine um, with with trying to stay ahead of the game. Yeah. Um, another team was uh, Team Solo Mid. They grabbed TSM. Mm-hmm. They ended up grabbing a team. And um, 
I'm actually, you know what? Let me bring up the article because the article talked about, and I had it up. The article talked about, um, yeah, Team Liquid decided to get a team, and what that's going to do is that's going to force other teams to gather the talent. Yeah, because you don't want to let. Fresh, yeah, they get the fresh pick of the talent on yeah. the rip. You know what I'm saying? So, um, now my problem with this is, and it's not with the teams going out and finding these players. Uh, my problem is with uh, is it my, my not my not even a problem. It's more of a concern. My concern is they're ju- you're jumping into a game, a brand new game, in hopes that you're going to have developer support. Now, I, like I was telling you before we started, most a lot of esports games start out without having developer support. And then some of them, like IE, your Overwatches, they come into the game with developer support. So, you know, who knows where Respawn wants this game to be in the next few years? If they wanted to, if they want to step into the esports side of it, how are they going to make balance the game out? What are they going to do to the game? How they're going to make the game enjoyable for people to watch? All of this stuff is concerns. Uh, sorry, I just hit my mic. Concerns to fans mm-hmm. uh, because this is why people watch esports games and then to also watch like their favorite player play. So with them, th- them picking up a team doesn't mean these teams are and, and they may and they do have like uh, tournaments and they do have things that these people uh, that some of these teams have been in. I watched the pro down that they had that um I think uh who was it? I want to say it was Ninja's team one, but I could be wrong. It could have been Dr. Disrespect. I know he Ninja played against Dr. Disrespect in the finals. Not sure if they won or lost, but I, I, I want to say Ninja lost or won. But uh, that wasn't like a – that was like a friendly community. Yeah, like we just know. got together and made it happen. Exactly, and decided to do this thing. If Respawn is backing this 100%, then I would say, okay – Yes, now is the time to start gathering players, figuring out a team, coming up with, you know, how you guys are going to market it. And the one thing that I did watch was with the 100 team, the 100 Thieves owner, which is Nate Shot. He was a professional Call of Duty player a few years ago. He came out and said exactly what his goal is for uh the this Apex Legend Battle Royale team because they also have a Fortnite team. Yes. They also have a, a game. There's a lot of teams out here with um, Fortnite teams on their roster that aren't doing anything because FaZe is running the table. You know, um, Optic Gaming, one of the biggest esports uh, teams out there, they had a Fortnite team and had to let them go because it just wasn't beneficial to keep them, especially when you got Tifu and FaZe running the table <laughs> for everything for all the tournaments winning million dollar tournaments in korea and all of this type of stuff so um for one they got to figure out if they're going to have developer um support if not they got to figure out and the game is already big enough that the community has has their input in it because look their uh respawn is already making changes to the game making nerfs to overpowered guns different stuff like that to the game so the community has a say so um, so with that being said, if, if they don't have developer standpoint, they need to have a strong community. A- Apex Legends community needs to be not only strong, but they have to have somebody organizing it to the point where there isn't any, you know, woeful issues that may arise within these tournaments. Because if, if the game isn't set up for you to play in an esports standpoint, now you got to jimmy around and figure out a different way yeah. to plan it. Like, you know, for example, Fortnite came out with this whole thing where you guys can all jump in. If you want to play against me, we can jump into our own match and come and compete against each other. You see what I'm saying? Or they had and remember before this, uh cash mat cash matches. So say if you wanted to play somebody in Fortnite. And then I'm I'm gonna use Fortnite as the example because that's the next best battle royale thing to compare Apex Legends. To. Got you. So say for instance, say for instance, um, I wanted to play against you in Fortnite, and we're playing for some prize. Say, say we're playing for some money, right? Just me and you. 
how the rules work is I, I team up with you or you team up with me, right? We jump into a match. Um, whoever gets the most kills uh, after, I think it's, I think it's like best out of seven or something like that. Whoever gets the most kills within the match wins. Because that's the only way you can run it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. With Apex Legend being a 3v3, do they have custom rooms? Do they have ways for these guys to practice? A practice against the elite teams out there, you know, not against just regular people. Yeah. Because, you know, these people, you're not playing against pros. You need to play against pros to get the feeling of what you need to do. And then another thing with Battle Royale, this is my other point behind Battle Royale Esports, is it's so random. Yeah. Very random. So at some point, some guy, some person can be that. And then, but this is where, you know, I say that, but I also pull away from that because with it being so random, how can the same team win over and are they just that lucky? <laughs> yeah. Hey, no. Fortnite in that aspect. Hey, no. And you're bringing us some solid points. Um, and before, before we jump any further, what would be the, th- what reason would, Respawn have to not go competitive. They don't. Okay, no I just wanted to, you know, I mean, no game in this time frame, this era, other than story-driven games. But even you can make the case like, oh, well, you create a story-driven game. Why don't you make a movie about it? You see what I'm saying? Uh, with any game, any PvP-driven game can have some type of esports scene around it sure especially if it has some type of skill involved i mean for for crying out loud tetris is an esport yeah probably the first esport probably was you know um so when you i mean besides pinball when you sit there and look at that any game that has a pvp element to it has the opportunity to be to have a a esports scene but a lot of things a lot of times you got to think about okay Developer standpoint mean or develop developer um, backing back games, they have to have the money behind it. They have to have the scene behind it, because if they're if they're saying okay, listen, we're if they're gonna back it, they're going to want to be a part of it. So maybe they'll hold like a two hundred thousand dollar tournament where the prize pool is two hundred thousand dollars, and the fir- top eight teams get a piece of the pie somehow, some way. Um, Right now, that type of money is nothing. Not yeah. when people mil- winning millions of dollars. Oh, yeah, and then don't even get me started on the League of Legends tournaments. Exactly. Hey, but... N- then, oh, go ahead. And then you have to think about it like this as well. Most of these pros they're picking up are streamers. Yep. So it, does it benefit me more, me more to stream the game? Or does it benefit me more to play the game to win, be a, have a chance to win a piece of this pie that you have. Maybe Respawn by itself isn't ready for that. You see what I'm saying? Look how long it took uh, Fortnite to get involved. Fortnite had to come into the community, something that the community built, and take over and create their own thing. You know, and then now everything else behind the community. It's, look at Call of Duty. Call of Duty is a perfect example. Call of Duty, people forget, was not back behind the developer until Modern Warfare 3. Mm-hmm. So since Modern Warfare 3, everything was a community-driven thing until Modern Warfare 3, they came in, held their held the tournament. And then even after Modern Warfare 3, they didn't come back, to be honest, until Black Ops 2. Black Ops 2 is when they came in, they acquired MLG, parts of MLG, and was able to say, okay, cool. We have this piece. We're going to hold Call of Duty championships, Call of Duty leagues, and do it that way. That way, UMG is no more. Gfinity, well, I'm sorry, Gfinity, which is a it's a European-based uh, organization, they held tournaments in the UK. And uh, what happened is they stopped turn- throwing tournaments, but MLG decided, hey, we'll throw an event over there probably like once every season or every year and they'll they'll go over there as call of duty the call of duty world league by activision and whoever but in cahoots with gfinity so gfinity is on the ground there why not team up with you guys to make something happen but 
everybody else, UMG, which was the bigger, was the other bigger tournament organizer, they're no more. They don't hold tournaments no more. And if they do, I have yet to hear about one. And you so, know, you, oh, go ahead. you know what, man? It's crazy because at first, I, I, not that I was confused. It's just this is the field, folks. I know nothing, very little about. Um, yeah. Esports has never really been my my thing. Um, I think the most I've paid attention would probably be uh, Overwatch League. That's probably yeah. been the most I've paid attention to. Um, and um, so I didn't understand what was going on with the whole developer backing, but now it makes sense because you have to create a sub game mode to run a proper tournament. Like yeah. there, there's no possible way you could run a proper three on three teams tournament without developer backing exactly. like because of the way the ma because it is drop and play like it's not let's set up a room who's in the room let's no it's let me give you an example of how people in the destiny community mm -hmm. had to team up with each other to play against each other to practice against each other because at one point destiny didn't have private rooms they didn't have yeah custom game mode. now hey before you go into that I wish I still had the article. So, you know, Rick Fox and a bunch of other pro athletes and famous personalities bought their own teams and set up their yeah. back their own teams. Rick Fox has Echo Fox. Well, he actually is heavily against that. He brought in the whole pro athlete, um, physical pro athlete mentality into the gaming world. He was like, why are you competing against the very same people you're going to be? Why are you practicing against the very same people you're trying to compete against during the tournament. He was like, we need to find other people for you to compete against because you're creating, you're showing them your hand. If you, if this is the way you play and the way you get down. I'll tell you why that's different when it comes to esports. Mm. Because in, in, let, okay, let's use Call of Duty as an example. In Call of Duty, the pros have a meta. There's a driven meta. There's like, we're going to play this way where they have general, uh, 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 gentlemen's agreements. They have things that maybe the developer thinks is, is fair to use between anybody that they say, Hey, we're not going to use. And that community, that professional community right there decides what they're going to use from what they're not going to use. Remember before this was a community thing. So the community would play the game, uh, figure out what maps what maps were more competitive, what guns were competitive, what guns were not competitive, what kill streaks were competitive, and they would play like that. You know if what? A player. Oh, go ahead. You I, you I, I, know I, what? Hearing that pushes me further away from esports because and let me and let me tell you, same reason why I like. I like watching soccer mm -hmm. more than just about every other sport is because you usually get, you usually get the best matches. Yeah. Like you're going to get the best matchups just like with UFC. That's how UFC took over when it came to boxing, when it uh -huh. came to combat sports, because yeah. you were constantly seeing the top of the top. However the hell they did it. People jumping off the cage, this and that. But now hearing what you just said about esports and its origin, and that in that sense of like uh, shooters and FPS and whatnot, yeah. it sounds more like and you use the word a gentleman's sport, yeah. and I'm now I start thinking golf, I start thinking not in a sense of level of uh, intensity, because mm -hmm. golf is intense as hell. I mean, yeah, I will I I go out there and hit some balls and just go go get a bucket of balls and go to the range. Just that alone is crucial. But yeah. but it's just the whole structure of it. Like, yeah. okay, so we know I'm this weapon mercs at a higher rate. We're not gonna do that because it's not as competitive. We know that it, it just it's too um it feels too rigid. Mm -hmm. And I feel like and even even thinking back to what you said when it came to um like thinking about Fortnite. I can only imagine, and then how do you add that rigid, those rules and that gentleman's agreement to battle royale? That yeah. that and and that further brings up the point: How does these teams keep winning? And 
Now, now that this that was the the point I was gonna bring up next was more so uh, wasn't the fact that the best team always wins because of this set meta. Mm. What happens is you guys they get together. This is how they used to do it. They get together. They figure out what was strong, what wasn't strong, what was they felt was fair, mm -hmm. and they used it. And they said, okay, we'll use this. The perfect example is this year's Call of Duty. This year's Call of Call of Duty, um, they uh, they had they were using AI score streaks. Right? Okay. And throughout the, the throughout the times of using it, they never had a situation like something that happened a few weeks ago. Well, a guy got a, a drone squad, a, a drone squad, right? And that's the thing that like the little flames, the planes that follow yeah. you. And um, he died in a search and destroy map. But he died on the bomb. So when he's the last person alive and they're trying to go get the bomb, but the drone squad is still up shooting at him. So can you imagine you killed the person that you're supposed to kill, right? Yeah. The score streak shouldn't still affect you because it shouldn't be in play. He's not there. So since he's not there, but his drone squad is still hovering over the bomb, he couldn't find, he had to like, Figure out a, a different approach to get to the bomb, sneak to the bomb, get down, crouch, and then defuse the bomb. Now, the, the community came out and was like, listen, AI score streaks, they're too strong. And with the ability to just do that, you can just get a, a drone. A suicider, and, yeah. And instantly, that's the round. Oh, I'm just going to die on the bomb. and I'm going to die on the bomb in a perfect spot. Yep, and that's that what people will start doing. My drone squad will forever hover here for the whole round. And that's that. You got to think about it. A round inside of a, a, a search and destroy map is like a minute, 30 seconds. So you have this short amount of time. Who knows how long a drone squad? And that's just one example. But this is why I think it's a good thing for the community to do this. Because developers, they have two people to entertain when it comes to the game. Your casual players mm -hmm. and hardcore your hardcore one percenters mm -hmm. i put esport team pro players in the one percent sure because they're going to grind the game so when you look at it in that aspect imagine if call of duty took the recon plane or the uav out the game for you i wouldn't want to play mm -hmm. that's probably the, that's probably the most used score streak in play in your typical playlist sure because it's I, I should be rewarded for getting my three kills or getting my 500 points. So now this can assist me to get my other skills, my mm -hmm. other kill streaks or score streaks. So, but in competitive play, UAV, anybody, any pro can go on a good three kill streak to get that UAV. And then, oh, to be able to, and that's not competitive or they don't look at it as competitive because now I can see where the person's at. I, at one point, I didn't, I didn't consider, um, the special abilities, the alts, as competitive, because some of them were were real, like instant. Like if I see you at ground slam, it's over. You, oh, you can't do bro! Nothing. And then the ground slam would ruin your your uh, whatever your alt was. Yeah, your yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, I always felt the ground slam was op when it came to when, especially when it came to kill streak versus kill streak. They even are in agreement a couple weeks ago. The uh, What's the, the, the pistol? The one shot pistol? I forget the name of it. Oh, the um God Skull Splitter with Skull Splitter. Nah, uh, what's the name of it? It's, oh, uh, what's her name? Oh, I know what you're talking Sarah. about. Yeah. Sarah Chick. Well, her gun, they used to use it, but they felt like, yo, we're pros. Yeah. Anybody can aim a gun, lane a gun, L2, tr L L2 trigger a gun, and shoot that person that they see. So it's like, yo, let's gentlemanly agreement this. And they did it. So nobody uses that gun anymore. So now you get to see the other score streaks out. One dude went, the first dude to ever do it, he went on uh, the high uh, kill streak because you can't use the drone squad anymore. He got a gunship in a map. Oh. A 5v5 map. He got a gunship and was wreaking havoc. Oh. Uh, his name is Silly. He plays for Team Envious. Ooh. And he went Ooh. on a tear with that. And it was just over. Like, <laughs> it's over. Yeah, the he map. Got that halfway in the map. And it was like, he was killing his own team. He was killing a team. It just was over after that. So without the community, it's going to be my last uh, thing to it. Without, my, without the community behind it talking about it, 
and creating it. I see where Rick Fox is coming from with that statement, but I'm not playing the everyday player that can only get a UAV. I'm not playing the everyday player that don't have the quality aim as a pro have in this game. I've played in some competitive Call of Duty matches against some pros before, and that shit didn't go good. So for <laughs> I understand the whole, no, no, they, they ain't played against me. I understand that, but these people live and breathe this shit. So... And you know what? And one one thing I will say, I agree one thousand percent. Um, that actually you you actually changed my mind. Um, that the points you brought up are great. You you really do need all that. And then when it comes to and I think what Rick Fox was saying when it came to practicing was we're gonna find pros level people for you to play against, but we're not gonna sit here and train against the very same people yeah. we're gonna be running the tournament against. And, um, but I do understand that even with me and when I play a game, if I'm playing with a bunch of just randoms, I move different than when I'm playing with some, a sweaty group of people yeah. and sweaty. For those who don't know, is tryhards, uh, super, super tryhards. Um, I've, I've ran with some sweaties on a couple of games and, uh, you, you move different. You call out. You it forces you to play to a new level. So I, I understand. I understand what you and you adapt. Like if I went from playing my Nintendo Switch, like okay, so guys, the one negative I got to say about the Nintendo Switch is there's a bunch of Metroid Mania games, probably more than there needs to be for some for a system that's this powerful handheld wise. I think there should be more. There should be more Breath of the Wilds and less Metroid Manias. Just that's that's one negative, but then the other is the control pattern is so different than every other console that don't they have a controller you can get for it, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but you no, know, like no. But I'm talking about the mapping and just like because it does have the A, the B, so in the X and the Y. But when you go A, B, X and Y, or square or X square, you know, triangle like circle, it it's different. So why? Uh, Reload is normally square. Yeah, it, the mapping is so different that I have to relearn to pick up my Xbox controller every time I switch back and forth. Okay, okay. Like, I haven't played my Xbox in a couple days, but I'm going hard on the Switch. So I know that when I get back on my Xbox, <laughs> bruh, it's about to be rough. Like, I've, you know how many times I've accidentally, like, triggered an attack that I wasn't ready for? Or how many times I've accidentally exited out of something, or threw my only grenade, or because the button map. Oh my god! Like it's easy for me to go back and forth between PlayStation and Xbox yeah. because it's it really is the structure wise it's the same exact thing. But it really, is. yeah. The only thing that throws me off from PlayStation and Xbox is the X button. Ah, okay, yeah, I, I yeah. Really think- Press X. Yeah. Press X. Yep. And that's because you play your PlayStation heavy, so it makes yeah. sense. So when you hear X, you press an A. Like yeah, yeah. Like I, I got you. Um, man, I need to pick up back my PlayStation. I need to jump on it and give it some TLC, some tender Dark love and care. I got too many options. That's my only problem. Too it's many too options, too- not enough time. Hey, you know what? That's we got. We got to talk about that because. <laughs> I got PlayStation memberships. I got on my Xbox the other day. I was like, oh, yeah, you need Xbox Live. I said, huh? Wait. I just what? bought that. I bro, just bought that. Bro, I'm telling you, all these options, man. Like, I just look. I, and then I keep buying games like I'm going to play them. I think I got two games in wrapped in plastic. Accessibility, dog. It's too accessible. Bro. Hey man, you you know it's like oh I can't wait to get all the money to buy all the games. Yeah, now you getting the money and ain't got time to play the damn games. I'd be sitting there looking at them. I'm I'm almost to the point of just watching all the games story on YouTube. Like I'm almost. I'm. Do it. I, I think you'll get to a point where you'll have some like time to kill. I, I just got to steer away from these RPGs, man. And, this and see, that's the only stuff I want to play. 
play these play these RPGs with these with this loot driven these loot driven games. It's like, oh, I need this gun. I gotta get it. I gotta get it. So that's what that's what throws me off from back. You know, I've been thinking about getting back into Fall, uh, Fallout. I've been thinking Ooh. about getting into uh, Metroid Exodus. That game looks actually pretty fun. So I don't know, man. I I just gotta figure it all out. But uh, what what's next, man? What we, oh what yeah, we okay. So jumping over to terrible transition. Um, but 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 oh, Fortnite. So we're sticking on the whole thing of um, battle royales. Uh, I've seen an article once again from The Verge that the five lawsuits against Fortnite um, developer Epic Games they're on hold. Um, personally. I feel like all of these are going to get dropped. I think so. Except the Millie Rock. The Millie Rock one is the only one I truly felt was going to have the most weight. Only because the person's name who first on camera did the dance is his name is Millie. He was doing the Millie Rock in his Millie Rock music video. And nobody on camera was doing the Millie Rock before the Millie Rock. And then to He's verbatim not- take the dance move, it's it's not like it's not like um Carlton, the whole um uh Alfonso Ribera thing, Ribeiro thing, where he took a dance and he was known for it. Yeah, but <sighs> who was doing I, the I, Millie Rock before the Millie Rock? I mean, who was doing the backpack kid dance before the backpack kid dance? Okay, him too. There you go. So now you, I just, you just I don't I don't think these lawsuits I don't I don't think I like these. I don't I don't oh, think I like I don't them. like them. Oh no, no, no. Let me because, let me refrain. I do not like them. But if I had to pick two who were going to win, like or who have a ground to stand on to even take it this far, Backpack Kid and Millie Rock. Everybody else, you you kind of you kind of rolling the dice. I get the saying to myself like, where does it stop? Yeah, where does this shit? Stop? It doesn't because stop, bro. Now you now I'm at a point where oh, if I if I do it in my dance video, you gonna sue me? Like, yes. You, like that's that's crazy. Hey, it is crazy, but letter of the law world we live in, you open yourself up to that at all times. Yeah, that, I'm, that's, I'm that's, low key. I'll be nervous every time I post something up on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'll just be straight ready to just close my page because I'm not about to deal with the lawsuits. Like I'm not like I legit stay ready for that. Just shut it down. Hey, no, no lie because that's how extreme we live. We hell, you just seen what happened earlier. I just had a video from 2018 get caught. The movie's probably on Blu-ray now. It, hell, it's probably got a VHS. They're probably getting number two is probably getting ready to come out. I don't want to put the movie out there, but I just got hit with a uh, with a copyright claim for a 2018 trailer review, which was probably done back in June of last year. Yeah. So I, it's people don't understand. I don't think people understand the law. True. And I don't think the law is I, caught I up. It's new territory, bro. Exactly. So, um. It, I don't know, man. I just I look at that type of stuff, and I I just say to myself like, where what is this? It, because what if when now one thing that we've all, we always talk about is Ready Player One. Yes. In that era, you mean to tell me if I get into my suit and I transition into the game, game, and I start Millie rocking in the game, I set myself up to be sued because I'm doing the dance in the. Like it's just you, too I don't think you're set up to get sued. I think you're set up to get a cease and desist. Like we better not catch you, or you're gonna have to wear the mil, uh, the Millie Rock uh, logo on your T-shirt every time you do it. Well, they, they say, all right, cool, we'll say it. But next. I don't know. I like I, where's the get back? Like I'm like, oh, Fortnite. You can't play Fortnite now. Like I'm oh, gonna take your dance out. Hey, you can't play Fortnite. <laughs> and I think this this is what gets me about it. This is what truly why I. I low-key rooted for the people to win is because they took everything to a T but the song. And I'm talking about the Millie Rock thing. Mm -hmm. You took the dance to a T. It's like they damn near mapped his body. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they did. And that's what I'm saying. So if you can go that far, 
And then the only way you side skirt me is by not using my song. That's the, I guess the fair, but you know what? Now this, now you can get into the fair use claims. Like I'm, I'm just speaking on basically on YouTube. Yeah. How often does somebody use that emote and how long yeah. does it go for? Yeah. It's an emote. So you, if fair use says I can use this content for 15 seconds, if the emote lasts for 15 seconds, <laughs> that's fair use. That's fair use. Hey, <laughs> and on that note, you win. Like, and, and this is, once again, I feel like everything we're dealing with now in the next 10 years is going to be drastically different because these laws have to evolve with. Have, and if they don't, they're just setting themselves up to have more. Yeah. Backlog. Yeah. And then I'm wondering, I'm thinking once that full VR situation comes up, because like, okay, um, when full dive tech really hits, I think that's when we're going to run into a lot of these big problems. But. Think about, think about this. Uh, there's got some VR games out right now, um, and I don't know exactly how they work, but I see all types of skins. I see people running around as, um, I see people running around as uh, all type of different characters that are trademarked characters or copyrighted characters. What's gonna happen when that all of a sudden is mainstream? Is it like, did you buy that skin? Yeah. Like, are you going to have moderators going around talking about, ah, uh, is okay, that a so Spider-Man skin? That is Did a good you? example. Look, look at, look, okay, let's use Fortnite once again. Okay. Fortnite, what happened when Infinity War came out? Oh, they did the Thanos thing. They had the Thanos thing. I guarantee you, Fortnite and Disney came and collabed. Oh, they had saying, to. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll do this, we'll do that, blah, 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 blah. It'll be for this long, you'll get this amount. Wouldn't it be easier and more beneficial for a person to say, listen, you use my dance. So, you know, let's hold, let's do this. Let's try to figure out a different way to, to, to make it beneficial to not only to me, but to you. Hey, listen, you use my dance, put my hook in there. And then this go in your credits, this go in your things. Now, I get my, I get my, th I get my promo. Now I'm going to tell you this. I don't think Epic Games is willing to do that. And that's why this is the they're going the route they're going. I don't think they would have looked at Millie Rock and said, uh, ah, you know what, yeah, let's do that. Mm -hmm. Because now you're dealing with a brand issue. I, I mean I, shit, they threw they Marshmallow had a whole concert. Yeah. Yeah. Marshmallow had a whole concert. No, but listen. I, I guarantee you listen. They, some type of cahoots with Marshmallow. You're talking about, isn't Marshmallow EDM house music, if I'm not mistaken? Okay, so you're talking that versus I Millie Rock on every block. Well, I, 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 it would have to be PG-13. Hey, Obviously, it would yeah, yeah. have to fit in the terms, but I'm, I guarantee you they can work something out. I oh, there's something there to work out. Hey, on a on a colder level, remember when LeBron was on the cover? I want to say it was 2K14. When uh because of one of his tattoos, he has like a trademarked emblem on his mm -hmm. body, and it was all over the posters and whatnot. He ended up I want to say they got sued, or they had to go yeah. and remove them. Uh I'm pretty sure yeah. they like blank it out or put something uh -huh. over it. Yeah, and that and I, I see I understand that, but when you when you're dealing with this territory of because that is a trademark yeah. like design. When you're dealing with a dance move that yeah, somebody claimed they created, it's kinda like well uh it's 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 kinda like, okay, listen, like I don't have faith that you're gonna win this case because we only use it for this amount of time and whatever the case may be, Wh whatever their, the argument is with their lawyers. And cause if this was really, ah, issue, let me tell you where they would they win, bro. Just, Hey, let's settle. You know what? You think? Yeah. I, and let me tell you why there it's even worth the fight. You charge for the emotes. Mm. If they didn't charge for the emotes, then it'd be a different, it'd be a different answers. I don't, I don't know. Most games do. Oh. But now, but now, see, we're in a different realm now because you can do challenges to get those emotes. So you can either pay or you can do the challenges to get everything. Remember, in, within the season on Fortnite, 
you get the battle pass and you 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 don't have to you can do challenges to unlock the emo so let us know in the comments guys because i i don't play fortnite like that so i don't know what the hell i'm talking about now we're in the now now you there's something else you can think about you pay for the battle pass i think you pay for the battle pass but anyway now you're in the realm of okay how many people have your emo how many people skipped your emo yeah how many times was it used how many do you treat it, it oh do you treat the emotes like a streaming service yeah but then but see but then this opens up the realm you do it you do trailer reviews yeah oh i get hit all day bro think of the issues that could bring up hey, no yeah. emote ran for 30 seconds so 30 seconds times the amount of people that use it i need this amount of money for that bro let me tell you the fear is real because for one, not too many people are are uh, trademark lawyers and all this other stuff. I the legalese of it all, I'm not too. Nah, I just yeah. do my best not to claim anything, like, and I do my best not to even try to monetize anything I do, because I know I'm not doing it. Like, I'm just reacting to it, or I'm talking about it, or giving my thoughts on it, which is reacting to it. Um, so, understanding that, like, I think there's probably there's probably three or four videos on there where I feel I created something. Yeah. Um, for the most part, though, I'm usually admiring and commenting on somebody else's work. So, knowing that monetization is just not even worth the risk. Like, I would... I would rather people donate on the side or catch me on Twitch or, yeah, you know, like don't or hit hit up my Patreon. Patreon killed the game with that one. Mm -hmm. They came in tough they, with that. They, YouTube has their own now too. Huh? That YouTube has their own. Style yeah. Of well, yeah, because you over here are getting beat over the head. It's like people wanna people wanna help me out. But they know I'm not going to make any money off of them watching my video. So go mm -hmm. ahead and drop some money off in this little jar over here, which I can pull some money out of. Like, it's, I honestly look at my, um, look at the whole being able to get to the monetization level on um, YouTube. And I'm like, that's, that's years out for me. I don't see that happening because not only do you got to get to the thousand subscribers, which I know I can get to. Um, yeah, like I know I can get there. But on top of that, you got to get 4,000 hours in a year of viewership. That, that's yeah. crazy. It's crazy to think now in terms of what I do and produce oh, now. Oh, okay, yes, yeah. I, 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 you know me, I'm more so look at it like. Yeah, if I had 250,000 subscribers, of course I'm going to hit my monetization numbers. If everybody just watched my video once, I'm going to get there. But but that's the point, though. You're asking people who were were monetized, were at 1,000, but they weren't nowhere near. But that's beside the point. Was, we're, yeah. we're rolling back into um, the whole lawsuit issues. Um, I get it. You know, especially trying to patent, uh, trying to trademark stuff. I want to be paid for what I quote unquote I'm feel I created, it. you know. Exactly. Uh, but that's why that's why there's stuff in place to do all that. And I didn't realize how intense it was until I'm in the process of doing it now. But um yeah, man. Get your paperwork in order, man. It it sucks cuz I I've, I've actually heard horror stories from people that I've been interacting with in this new world I'm diving into um of people you run it for a couple of years using your name, using all these different things. And then all of a sudden somebody starts selling t-shirts with your name and logo. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, you didn't have a, you weren't doing business with, you didn't have a trademark. You didn't have, you didn't have nothing. Like you could start your process and then request a cease and desist. But what, like at that point, the damage is done. Yeah, and at that point, isn't it like okay? Well, who started it first? Yeah, it turns it. Yeah, it's it's just so, bro. It's so much going on, man. But lawsuit. Yeah, I I mean, you're fighting an uphill battle. That's why I said the only ones I felt had any type of chance of winning were the ones that you didn't know about that move until you seen that person doing it. Exactly. So. 
Well, I don't know. Like I said, bro. I got you. Oh, no, 100%. I'm with you, man. It's 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 murky waters. Yeah, and then it's just a whole... It's a it's a realm I, I know specifically. Like, imagine if games started to do that. Oh, well, Nintendo. Yeah, and I know... and at there, some there, point, are some, there are some it, companies that do do that, yeah. At some point, games did do that because it was a whole, you know, you need permission. Uh-huh. I think it was something happened with the with the community. I can't even really speak on it because I I know it happened. I just don't remember anything about it. And then it became like, all right, well, listen, it's just free advertisement. This is why YouTube was able to create YouTube gaming, and this is why Twitch exists to this day. Yeah. So, uh. Yeah, but all right, man. Well, uh, what we got next on the agenda? Oh, you, you know what? I I was just go ahead. No, what are you about to say? No, I was just going to talk about a couple games that were coming out that I'm excited for, but that I'm probably not going to play. Mm-hmm. Um, so, The Hunt, which was a hardcore uh, horror shooter, like, competitive hunting game where you can kill your friend, kill the other guys, but you're trying to hunt monsters to get paid, and all this and that. Showdown? Yes. It's coming to Xbox One. Okay. Um. At least that's what. Yeah, it's coming to Xbox One, and um. I they need to hurry up, so they 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 really do because my computer's too damn slow to play it and stream, and then even when I play it without streaming, I'm I'm still that was my first ever crash moment. It was the most embarrassing thing ever. Um. And the hunt. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so it's coming out. Um, they're talking about a spring 2019 release. They just had an update on it. Um, hopefully that comes through and maybe I'll be able to stream it then because when I tell I mean, you... you should be able to stream it on Xbox. Huh? I said you should be able to stream it or you should be able to play it and stream it. Oh, yeah. Coming on Xbox. Oh, yeah. I hope... Go for that setup. Man, I hope they fix... Um, I hope it's not all buggy and whatnot. That'd be trash. But, you Bro, know. I'm telling you right now, I'm not excited for no games. Right. The Division Two comes out. It's and, a, people are playing it right now. Yeah, people are playing the 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 beta. The beta's out, but I'm sorry, I'm over here messing with my rubber band. Um, yeah, so the Division Two comes out, and the or the actual game comes out, and uh, they you see they dropped they dropped the gang of stuff, and we'll talk about that in the next episode. They dropped a. It's gonna have so much content based off of what they had, like fifty-two end bosses, and it's about to be ridiculous. Like people gonna be dumping time into it. Yep, and they they look like they learned from their mistakes, so we'll see what happens when that comes out. But I'm not excited because I gotta slow down. Yeah, I ain't playing, just talked about all the games we got. Bro. We ain't playing Pokemon come out. Oof. End of this year, I gotta prep, prep myself for that. Oof. Next. Still playing the Gang of Destiny. Still also playing some. Uh, I I did try Apex. Uh, got that game is actually pretty fun. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with myself. I'm just gonna kick back, relax, and. Um, you know, real talk. I'm sitting on my hands, and um, I'm trying to slow down. Only time mm-hmm. I buy, I've been buying games lately is when they're on killer deals. Like yeah. um, I'm down to my last month and a half with my uh, Best Buy Game Pass. Um, gamer rewards because they they canceled that service so when that runs out i don't get the physical discounts anymore which was dope um so anytime i come across a deal there i pick it up like i picked up assassin's creed's odyssey i picked up shadow of war um battlefield 5 just games that i know at some point i'm gonna want to play yeah um regardless of whether i play them right now or uh, six months from now but also um what I wanted to now that we're talking about new games and why the the slowdown, Anthem, Anthem people are first off they came out uh, I forgot who created Anthem EA came out and admitted like yes it was crashing um, it was crashing games, which they I guess they addressed in the most recent update I don't know if the update was today or this weekend but um, they said they addressed it but then within that update they changed the way the loot drops happen. To the point where people are talking about boycotting the game. They did. They said So that would be the third time that they changed the way the loot top. The loot yes. Top. And the game hasn't even been out two months. That's mad crazy. And that's a that's a lot of major changes. 
Like that's nothing small. Like that you're changing the core. This this what they're going through right now is the very same reason why I stopped playing the division one. Yeah, because see when you start I, go ahead. I feel like once you start doing stuff like that, I'm what I'm looking up right now is to see where Anthem where Anthem is on the list right now. So mm. four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty four, twenty eight, thirty two, thirty six. 40, 44. They're 44th place on uh, Twitch right now, right? Mm. Now, uh, what I was about to say is they're, they're, going, they're going to drive that game into the ground. Yep. So why I say that is because you're messing with the major thing. The major thing people play this game for is for the loot. Yep. They pay for the loot. They play the field strong, and they, people are going. And this is the thing: I think once people start understanding that, when people start understanding that, listen, your game will be broken. The community will find a way to break your game, whether they find a glitch, whether they find something in the game that you 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 didn't you forgot about, or you look you you didn't look into as heavy, um, or they find a way to a, a beat the end boss in thirty seconds or whatever. Yeah, people are going to beat your game. Once you start making it harder for people to acquire the 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 loot, the reward, they're gonna walk away. There's Bro. plenty of other games out here that can give them that. And, and they're then, messing with the loot to the point where it's making people want to boycott. Bro, Anthem is going to die before it had a chance to live. Listen to this. However, it appears some fans might not um not be not be willing to wait a few months for larger changes to take effect. In a loot drop mega thread on Reddit, players are airing their grievances over the currently stingy state of loot drops. While some fans are asking for Bioware to meet us in the middle um, with loot changes, one thread in particular is calling for a boycott of the game until quality of loot becomes more uh, quality loot becomes more prevalent. Saying since there is virtually zero dev response to the horrendous loot system. The best way to get the message across is a boycott. Now, this is from IGN. Bro, what do I always tell you? What do I always tell you yeah. about the, the, the community? Yeah, you and, just said that. You just spent the bro, first half of this talking about it. It's, it's when, you, when you don't care enough to... This is why I, I respect Bungie. Bungie, they have a whole community manager. They uh -huh. that talk to you guys. You write them, they reply. They got Bungie help. These things are put in place to stay in to stay in touch with the community. If no one's talking to you, either they don't care, or they don't have that. They don't have that established something established to look at the game from the player standpoint. Because they're only looking at that from business wise and developer wise. They're not looking at it. I, see that that leads me to ask like, how many of your your people that worked on this game play the game. Oh, because mm. you know, like I said, using using Destiny as an example, because I play Destiny, the community they have raid alongs, they have things, they have a uh, community events where if you team up against the the developers at Bungie in a Crucible match and beat them, they give you like a free emblem, like a special emblem, stuff like that. I ain't saying all games should be specifically like that, but but they're talking back, they communicate. Hey, but no, but let me tell you though, all games that are games as a service should be to that level. That mm -hmm. needs to be the new standard if we're gonna go that route. Like, if we're gonna go that route and this is gonna be games as a service, and you're going to be talking about this is supposed to be played for years to come. I You should, one, be on the ground with us. Yeah. Two, you need to be in constant communication because I feel at any given moment we should have a hot fix. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and especially when you gave us half a game. Thank you. You gave us half a game up front. <laughs> half a game up front and then came out with a 90-day 90 90-day 90 roadmap. I can't understand that, and I, I I hate to be the one to say this, but I said it. This game had the potential to blow other RPGs out of the game. Yes, just like Division has the opportunity to do the same. Just like Destiny, well, just like Destiny had the Destiny Two had the opportunity to do that same thing. When you start taking a step backwards and not trying to progress forward, 
Like that's the one thing y'all you can't say about the division and destiny. They took steps backwards, but then they took steps forwards. It may not have been enough steps to catch back up to where they started off at, but they progressed to take steps forward. Anthem took 17 steps backwards, three steps forward, and then another 17 steps backwards again. And and you know what? You're in a bad spot. And, and they have the potential to die outright, just the game just die. And you know what's so bad about that? And I um shout out to E. He he brought up a big point. He was like, you know what? I'm iffy on it because all it takes is them to say, you know what, this is a wash and kill the servers. That's with any game. E, that And that's my problem with investing so much into these games as a service, into yeah. these online-only games. Like, at some point, Destiny is bound to turn off. Now, who knows how long it'll be. Actually, and I wish to find the article, and I hope anybody out there is... Uh, who's listening can find it there was a beautiful article written by a game informer um by a game inf- um, former writer who looked up uh one of the star wars online experience games ended like the game was it's been on for years and then they finally are killing they were killing the servers and the guy created an avatar and the developers opened up the whole universe because you know normally things are like blocked by level caps and like oh you're not strong enough to be here and there well yeah. this dude went around in game and went all over and watched how people were celebrating people were giving away high powered weapons people were throwing money fireworks and this and that and he did this whole great story and it was almost like the end of the world but in a odd like macabre like beautiful way and then all of a sudden the server ended and it was like networks down and nothing like and he see i I then go i then would have to ask i then would have to say that i think it'll be a little bit harder for games like this because of the microtransactions Mm. is the microtransactions making enough to make a difference Mm. if these games are if if these games with microtransactions if they're making enough money they're probably not going to shut it down because they're making money from it. It's going to take a lot. It's going to take a lot for a game like that. It's going to take a lot for like your Apex, the, your Apex, any any game with some type of microtransaction. And uh, I only bring that up is because I, I got to thinking about it. I'm like, yeah, that is true. This game could, any game could just shut off at any point. Yeah. But. When you get a game like like okay, so I think about SOCOM. When they shut the SOCOM servers down, remember that game had no microtransactions. They shut it down because player base wasn't there, and the game just died. They they didn't revise it. There was no community support behind it. Nobody talked spoke on the game. A, a patch came out every year. That was year. that was like a hardcore fanboy game. Like you and had that, to be. I love that yeah. game. That game that was one of my. It is one of my favorite games. And when they shut the servers off, there was just nothing nobody could do. Like, like it just died. <laughs> uh, it's over. Like there's just nothing you can do about it. But when you get to thinking about these other games, these EA Battlefront, like I wonder what what is the first of all, what's the player base like, and how much money are they making off of these microtransactions? Is it enough to make a difference? And because you, you just put this whole plan together to make money outside of selling the game. Hey, and trip on that's this. That's just scary. Trip on this. There was just a sale on Xbox Live, Xbox Gold, uh, Live Gold, where they were selling um, the the first Battlefront Ultimate Edition for like six bucks. Mm-hmm. So if they're still selling the Ultimate Edition for the first one, even though it is six dollars. That means there's enough fan base there to keep the servers up. And they still getting the money. And I wonder if people are still buying cosmetics on... Well, hell, you can still buy VC for uh, different NBA 2Ks. Yeah, hey, man. Yeah, the money... Bro. Hey, people. You vote with your dollars. We're starting to get towards the end. Um, but... And then another thing you got to think about. Are these dedicated servers... Man, if they're not, then it's probably nothing for them to keep pe- uh, peer-to-peer servers up. You see, you see, you see what Battlefield like. I jumped back on Battlefield Four, 
Um, or what? Not Battlefield Four. Was it Battlefield Three? I, I, I forgot which. Uh, I forgot which Battlefield I hopped on. I bought it because it was super cheap and I enjoyed the hell out of it. But all mm-hmm. the servers were like private servers. And it was okay. strange to see because everybody has these like magical gentleman rules. No rockets. Uh, yeah, it, you can't can't in Battlefield they can cre- you can create like yeah you can server. create your own okay. yeah. Okay. So people are still keeping the game alive, but it just it just felt weird not seeing like a dedicated U.S. West one. Yeah, U.S. Yeah. West see, two. That's probably the last game to do that because SOCOM did that, and they don't, you don't have SOCOM no more. Yeah. Ooh. That sucks. Man, people, you vote with your you vote with your money. How you spend your money is what they continue to do. The reason why we keep seeing all these battle royales, the reason why we keep getting Elder Scrolls uh, Skyrim over and over, is because people like me keep buying it. Shame on me. Shame. But one thing I will say is I've gotten further in the Nintendo Switch version than I have in any of the other versions I've bought. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. It's so. it's all of the above. We're just gonna we're gonna hit C all of the above. Um but yeah let's wrap it up. We're we're right yeah we're at a good time. Um yeah, yeah so life is good. We're being consistent. Much love to all the people who support us. Tell them Dev you guys so much man. Oh my God! I'm just glad to be finally back. Yeah, it feel we're feeling we're feeling good, we're feeling good. I'm in the vibes. We're doing our thing. We're oh, good. and well, I'm gonna leave you guys with some homework. Go watch a fun TV show with your family, um, and uh, yeah, read comic books. They save lives. I'd agree. I, I really would agree. Yep. Well, just not while you're driving. Yeah. I sent this dude a comic book and he was reading it. I'm like, bro, why? What are you? What? I'll talk to you later. I'm not even going to go down that road. (laughs) We we do not promote illegal activity here. I sure do not. Adventures of the Black Nerds. Uh, T. Jones with the placeholder in front. And Bear J67. We do not. (laughs) We do not. We do not promote illegal activity. And on that note, I have to say, peace. Peace.